Hello, I'm Kath. My channel is Made by Kath Craft. Thank you very much for joining me for my latest video. This video is a bit of a catch up on what I've been sewing over the last week or two. So I've got a few different projects to share with you in this video that are in various stages of completion. I had a couple of weeks break from sewing, or I didn't do a lot of sewing for a couple of weeks earlier in April because it was Easter holidays and I went away for a week with my family and then I was generally just a little bit busy doing activities with my children. But they're back at the school now, so I've been getting stuck into a few sewing projects and I've been really enjoying working on them and I'm looking forward to sharing them with you. But before I start sharing those, I'll start off as usual with what I'm wearing today. So it's still quite cold here actually, even though we're reaching the end of April, the weather hasn't really warmed up yet. So today I've got on a jersey dress and a cosy cardigan on top and the cardigan is quite essential. I think I'd be feeling quite cold without it. But I'll talk about the dress first. This dress is quite a simple little t-shirt dress that I made by hacking one of my favourite t-shirt patterns, which is this one here. It is the Solar Sweatshirt and T-shirt Pattern by Papercut Patterns. And I really like it. It's just quite a boxy, relaxed fit T-shirt with a drop shoulder, a round neck, quite a straight fit. And you can make it as a T-shirt or a sweatshirt and you can add an optional little ruffle into the shoulder. I've talked about this one quite a lot before. I love it as a T-shirt, but the version I'm wearing today is a hack to turn it into a little jersey dress. And it was quite a simple hack. I basically... Um, Trace off the top of the t-shirt pattern, the main body piece, and then I used um, the, bot the bottom for the, like, the t-shirt sort of hips bit, the tun TV tunic pattern by Tilling the Buttons, um, which is quite a straight fit tunic pattern that I really like for summer. And I quite like the sort of shape and fit of that around my hips. I know what size I use for that. So I basically just sort of um, borrowed this top, traced down to meet the lines of the stevie on the bottom, and lengthened it to the length I wanted, um, which is kind of like a mini skirt type length. So yeah, it's a really simple little hack and quite a simple sew. And actually I originally made this dress, I'll show you, it's got kind of just short sleeves on. It's quite a simple oversized t-shirt dress. And I originally made it thinking it'll be like a great beach cover up when I'm on holiday and that sort of thing that I could just pull on nice and comfy. Um, don't need to worry about it getting spoiled on the beach, that sort of thing. But I've actually found I've got a lot more wear out of it than I expected, just because it's so comfy and easy to throw on. And I tried it earlier in the winter over a pair of thick tights with the cardigan, and I really like that look too. So that's why I'm wearing it as today. I might make another one at some point, actually, of these dresses. They're just so comfy and easy to wear. And I made it in this lovely um, cotton jersey. It's an organic cotton jersey fabric came from Eliza Mac Fabrics. I will link their website down below. I think this particular fabric is out of stock now, but they do have some other lovely jersey print fabrics, as well as woven fabrics and all sorts on there. So yeah, I'll link them down below. I just really love the print and the colours of this one. It has like a dark grey background with these lovely white and sort of um, pinky, almost watercolour painted flowers on it. Um, and I was actually pleased I had just enough of this fabric to squeeze out a t-shirt dress and also a plain t-shirt too. I've also got just a basic t-shirt version of the um, solar tea pattern this as well and I wear them both a lot and I think the pinky tones in this cotton jersey go quite nicely with the cardigan I'm wearing today and this is the cardigan I knitted I think a couple of years ago and I made it by hacking this pattern here um, which is the downtown cardigan pattern by All About Amy. It's a really nice simple cardigan pattern. It's designed for beginners, which is why I decided to give it a go in the first place. Well, I like the look of it, but I also thought it'd be a great first pattern to try when I started knitting garments for myself. But it's quite an oversized, um, drop shoulder, relaxed fit cardigan. And you knit it up just in a bit of rib stitch and mainly garter stitch, so it comes together quite nicely. And it's designed to be knitted in quite chunky yarn and large needles, so it knits up quite quickly. Um, and I made my first version just like this version on the front of the pattern here. But this version here is a bit modified um, in that I used a finer wool and finer needles to make it a little bit less chunky and big and a bit more a bit more understated, I guess. Um, it's got the bit of the balloon sleeper, the original pattern, but it's all a bit more subtle. I sort of brought it all in a little bit. And then I made it into a cropped version. I'll stand up a bit so you can see. Um, and it was actually quite fun. It took a bit of time to figure out how to hack it, um, but I really love the end result. 
I've got this in a pink and a black and I wear them both quite a lot. I find they go with quite a lot of things in my wardrobe and I love, do love a dropped shoulder and the whole sort of slouchy relaxed fit but it's not too oversized or too cosy. Um, and this one I made in a worsted weight yarn from Wool and the Gang called the One Merino. I'll link it down below. I think this colour might be called Pink Blush. It's a lovely sort of soft pink colour I think and I do find it goes with quite a lot of stuff in my wardrobe including my jersey dress I've got on today I think. I'll put a picture up so you can see what they look like on together. Um, it's just a really nice comfy casual outfit I think just to throw on um, but makes me feel quite cosy too while the weather is a little bit cold. Please hurry up and warm up weather I can't wait to get some of my more summery clothes out. But yeah that is what I'm wearing today. So now I'll move on to sharing with you what I've been up to over the last week or two on the sewing front. And the first thing I've got to share is some new fabric. And I've had this fabric a couple of weeks now. I remember exactly when it arrived. I remember I ordered it on the first weekend of the Easter holidays and I knew we were going away a week later, but I thought that would give it plenty of time to arrive before we went away. And then it didn't actually get dispatched until quite late that week. And I started to get a little bit worried that it might end up arriving while we were away and spend a few days getting a bit wet and soggy on the doorstep. But luckily it's arrived the day before we went away so I was quite relieved about that. And it's a fabric that was released by Guthrie Garney as part of their 10th birthday celebrations. I'm sure you saw um, earlier this month that Guthrie Garney turned 10 and they had a big celebration. They had a birthday party at their shop and they also released two new fabrics as part of the celebrations. The first one was a beautiful viscose fabric that they released in three colourways. I'll try and pop up a picture of it. Um, this fabric was designed by Lauren in collaboration with the print artist Rachel Parker. And it's a really gorgeous print that had loads of meaning for Lauren. Um, I'm sure you might have seen her talking about the print. I really enjoyed hearing all about it. Um, each of the elements on the print had a special meaning to, um, to Lauren and um, yeah, it was a really gorgeous print. I didn't get any of that fabric because although I thought it was lovely, I couldn't quite think what I would make with it. But the other thing they released, or the other fabric they released, was a French terry fabric using a print they previously released on a viscose base quite a while ago. And it was another Rachel Parker print, and it was called Chica Cheetah. And I thought it was a really cute print, and I remember when they originally released it, I think they released it as part of a Guthrie Garney Sewing Society kit, along with the Closet Court Elodie dress. Um, and I thought it was so lovely, that fabric. But I couldn't quite think again of what I'd make with that fabric, a bit like the new floral viscose. So I didn't get any, but I did love that print. And then for their 10th birthday celebration, Guthrie Garni had the print re-released on a French terry base. Again, in three different colourways. There was quite a pretty soft pink, and then a quite a light sort of turquoisey blue colour, and then a deeper indigo colour. And I decided to get some, because I thought I could definitely see myself sewing that up. So I went for this colourway here, the sort of darkest colourway, which, I thought it might be a navy blue, but actually in the light, I think it's more of an indigo-y purpley colour. It's very deep, dark purple colour that's sort of bordering on a navy blue, I guess. But it's a gorgeous print. I love all the colours in it. I'll unfold it a little bit so you can see how lovely it is. It's got this beautiful chicka cheetah print with pops of turquoise and yellow and hot pink and white. And I just thought it was so pretty. Um, and I thought it's something I could really see myself making up. So I got, um, I think I got maybe 1.3 or 1.4 metres of this fabric. I do like on the Guthrie Garni website, a bit like the Minerva website as well, you can buy the fabric in 10 centimetre increments. So I think I got about 1.3 or 1.4 metres of this fabric. And they also um, sold matching ribbing that had dyed the same colour as the base colour of the fabric. So I got the matching ribbing as well. I think I got maybe um, 0.4 or 0.5 metres of that ribbing. And I'd like to turn this into some sort of sweatshirt. Um, you might have seen that when, um, when they released this fabric, Guthrie and Garney released it as a sewing society kit also. Um, you could just buy the fabric itself or you could buy the kit. And if you bought the kit, you got the Jarrah sweatshirt by Megan Nielsen. Um, and Lauren sewed up quite a few samples of these fabrics in different colourways um, in different versions of the Jarrah and they all looked really lovely. So. I am quite tempted to make a Jarrah. I didn't need to get the kit because I already have that pattern. But I think this fabric would make a lovely Jarrah. But I'm not quite sure yet. Um, I haven't even washed it yet. I thought I'd show it to you before it's been washed and got a bit crinkly. 
Um, I need to pre-wash that. I need to have a think because I'm not sure what to use. And if I do make the gel, I'm not sure which view to go for, whether to go for the version with a tie or just a plain bottom band. Um, See, so yeah, I'm not quite sure on this one, but I definitely like to make it into a sweatshirt. It's quite a lightweight French terry, so it'll definitely be sort of more like a summer weight sweatshirt. Um, it's got the loop back here. And it is sort of printed onto the, it's got like a white base that's printed on, but it's quite nice. And when you stretch it, you don't get too much of the white showing through. So that is nice. It's lovely fabric. Um, See, so yeah, I'm just not sure which sweatshirt pattern to use yet. I think I'm going to have a little think about it and not rush into sewing up. But it's such pretty fabric. And the reason I ordered it that weekend, even though I knew we were going away a week later, and I guess it's not a surprise it took a while to be dispatched because they must have had a really, really busy weekend of orders and loads to process. But I wanted to make sure I snapped up that weekend because I thought it would probably go out of stock quite quickly. And I think it is out of stock now, possibly. So I am glad I snapped up then, even if it was a bit of a nail biter as to whether it would arrive on time for the holiday. Um, yeah, it's just really lovely. And I was really excited when I saw they'd re-release their Chicka Cheetah print in a French Terry fabric. So yeah, that's my plans for that one. I'm really glad to have some um, and I'm just going to have a little mull over. If you um, got this fabric, um, I'd love to hear what you have made or are going to make out of it. Um, yeah, so any inspiration would be much appreciated. So the next thing I've got to share is a new make. And this is one I started before Easter. Um, I had it cut out then and I'd started the sewing and then I did a little bit over Easter here and there. And I finally finished it this week and I really love it actually. Um, I'm really happy with how it turned out. And there's a dress I've been making using a pattern from this book here, which is the Breaking the Pattern book by Named Clothing. This book's been out for quite a few years now, I think. Um, and it's one that sat on my shelf for ages before I finally tried a pattern in the book. And I've made that pattern now twice and it's this pattern here it is the sarast shirt dress i hold it up so you can see the line drawings i think it's a really lovely shirt dress pattern um with some really pretty details to it so it's a shirt dress with a gathered skirt but it's got this interesting flat fronted panel that runs down the front so the gathering doesn't go all the way around the waist at the back it's got a yoke um and some um sort of waist darts here it's got a sort of full collar with this lovely little ruffle detail you can add on at the front of the collar it's got princess seams on the bodice a short sleeve and then buttons down the front and it's designed to be a midi length style shirt dress and I do love a shirt dress and I really enjoyed trying this one I made a version last summer and I found it a really comfy fit on me oh the pattern piece is just falling at the bottom there um yeah I found it a really comfy fit on me in terms of the shoulders and around the armhole and everything and I really enjoyed wearing my first version so I was quite keen to make another version in terms of sizing this book goes from a UK 6 up to the UK 22. But yeah, it was one a pattern I was really keen to revisit and I remember really enjoying sewing my first one. The only funny thing about this pattern is the way the instructions are written because it's part of a book is you kind of have to jump around in the book because the pattern instructions will refer to different bits in different patterns. Like it'll say, sew the sleeve using the method in a different pattern in the book and you have to kind of scroll through the book to find that. So there's a bit of jumping around, but the instructions are nice and clear as long as you don't mind jumping about a bit to find the right bits. They're all in there. They do tell you where to look. And um, yeah, it's a really nice one to sew up. And my second version um, here I made in a fabric that I saw um, on Fabric Godmother. It was one of their own fabrics and they often release fabrics in the vintage print library and sort of bring them to life um, on different bases. And I thought this fabric was just so pretty and I thought it was a perfect sort of base to make a shirt dress. So here it is. Um, the fabric is a cotton lawn fabric. I think it's called Pesca Floral. I'll link it down below. I just love this really pretty blue colour and I thought it was so pretty with these pops of sort of orange and peach on it. And I do love a blue. Um, and I thought it was quite a nice summery blue so make a lovely summery shirt dress. So here is my Sarast shirt dress. I love how it's turned out. I've added on this little ruffle on the collar which I think is such a pretty feature. It makes the shirt dress a little bit different. It's got the princess seams, which create a really nice shape to the bodice. And I had a bit of fun adding on these um, hot, sort of hot orange, can you call it hot orange? Bright orange um, buttons. And I added a little bit of blue thread to sort of tie into the blue. I think they look really cute and go quite nicely with the flowers on this one. So it's got the short sleeves. The first version I made of this dress, I added a little sleeve ruffle. But for this one, I thought I'd just keep it simple as per the pattern, just hem the sleeves. It's got the flat front and the gathering around the... Um, back and sides which is really pretty it's got the yoke at the back um which i think is lovely so you've got the fabric on the inside which gives a really nice finish i think 
Um, and then for my version, I decided to make my second version a bit shorter. For my first version I made last summer, I made the full midi length version, and I love that, but I thought with this fabric it might suit a little bit shorter, so I've gone for sort of around the knee length, and I'll pop up a photo in a moment so you can see how the length looks. But yeah, it's a really enjoyable sew, and it comes together really nicely. I do find the fit on me seems to be nice, there's plenty of room across the shoulders. Um, I made a size 6 on the bust and the waist, and then a size, um, I think, 8 on the hips. Um, that'll be based on my bust and hips measurement. My waist measurement would actually put me as a size 8, and for my first version I made of this dress, I did um, trace a size 8 at the waist, but I found that gave more of a roomy fit there, and I don't know whether that's the style or the pattern designs for it not to be too brought in at the waist, but I thought for my second version I'd maybe bring it in a little bit at the waist, so I decided to size down one size and I brought it into a size 6 there and I quite like how that turned out. So yeah, this is my second Saras dress and I'm really looking forward to wearing it when the weather warms up a bit. I guess I probably could wear it now with a pair of sort of dark tights, maybe like a dark cardi as well, I guess that'll work quite well for this time of year too, but I think I might save it for summer because it feels like such a summery fabric. What was I going to say about the fabric? Oh, I love sewing with a cotton lawn. Um, I love sewing a shirt dress. I love sewing with a cotton lawn. It just is so nice to work with. You know, it presses really well. It doesn't sort of stretch out or anything. It was really well behaved. Um, and I just think it's quite an unusual colour, this one, and quite pretty. And I love how you can see the ruffle there in the detail because my first version I made, I made a really busy fabric. Um, it had sort of like a sort of it's a very light grey base with lots of little dots on it and I think some of the little details like the ruffle maybe got a bit lost because the fabric was so busy but I think this fabric because there's a little bit less going on in it shows off those details really well so yeah it was really enjoyable so I'm really happy I was able to find some buttons that went quite well and yeah I'm really looking forward to wearing this one it does crease quite a lot so it's one that'll definitely need a good iron every time I want to wear it um I don't mind because I really love it. Um, oh, and let me put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on and see that fit around the waist. Um, yeah, just I just bought it into being a little bit more fitted. And I love my first version. It's not really loose around my waist. It's just a little bit more um, looser than this version where I bought it in slightly more there. So, yeah. Really enjoyable So from the um, Breaking the Pattern book, um, the Saras shirt dress. I definitely recommend it as a shirt dress pattern. One of the things I particularly like about it is that even though... The size 6 is designed for sort of a smaller bust, there is still that room around the shoulders that makes it comfy so I don't feel there's any sort of tightness there. So if you have a sort of smaller bust with a slightly broader shoulder like me, I'd definitely recommend this pattern. It just seems to have quite a nice fit there. So that's my sewing project. I finished this week my Sarast shirt dress. And then I've also got a current sewing project that I'm working on at the moment and I wanted to share with you how I was getting on with that one. And my current sewing project I'm working on is to finally make the denim skirt I've been talking about for ages. Um, I've been wanting to make this one for absolutely ages. It's a denim skirt that I'm making using this pattern here, the Moss Skirt Pattern by Grainline Studio. This is a pattern that I've sewn up before, but I've only sewed it ever in corduroy fabric. But whenever I talk about it, I've said I'd love to sew up a denim version. And I finally got around to finding some denim, and I'm actually, yeah, making that skirt come to life now. So the Moss Skirt Pattern is a really nice um, skirt pattern that I think is perfect for making in denim. It's got this fly front zipper and these slash pockets. You can make it as a mini skirt or a knee length skirt with this extra fabric panel on the bottom. I'll show you the back too, the um, front of the pattern instructions has a back view on so you can see it's got a classic jean style yoke at the back too which I think gives a really nice shaping in that area. It hasn't got the biggest size range ever this pattern, it goes from a US 0 to 18. And the largest size is designed for a waist of 37 inches. But it's a pattern that I really like. I love the simplicity of it. I find the instructions are nice and clear and simple to follow too. There's, they're not too wordy. They're quite to the point. Um, and yeah, I've just been wanting to have a denim version for ages. I think it's something I'll get a lot of wear out of. So I finally got some denim. I got some denim from Guthrie Garney. It is there, I've got the title of it up on my computer so I get it right. It is their mid blue 11.7 ounce rigid cotton denim fabric. It says on their website it's still in stock but they're down to their last few so I'll link it down below in case you're interested. It'll be worth snapping up sooner rather than later. It's a really lovely fabric and it's just the colour I wanted and I wanted a slightly more substantial denim fabric so I kind of could make a jean skirt that is a bit like a pair of jeans in skirt form if that makes sense. Um, so I'll show you how I'm getting along 
with my uh, moss skirt. Here's the back of the skirt. So far I've sort of sewn the yoke and the skirt pieces together and added a bit of top stitching there. And actually the moss skirt pattern doesn't mention anything about top stitching other than um, to sort of stitch around the sort of um, the fly zipper here. Um, so yeah, it doesn't, isn't designed to be top stitch, but I thought it would look better and be more of a kind of classic denim style skirt if I did add top stitching. And I've been really enjoying doing the top stitching actually. So yeah, there's my top stitching on the back. Um, I hadn't done any top stitching on denim for quite a while, so I had a look online for some tips to sort of re remind myself what to do. Um, like um, you need to sort of lengthen the stitch slightly. So I think I've used a 3.5 um, length stitch rather than a classic 2.5 that you'd use for normal stitching. Um, and I actually found a, a sort of article on the Grainline Studio website with some tips for top stitching. It wasn't written with this moss skirt pattern in mind because obviously this one doesn't have any instructions for top stitching in. I think it was written for one of the other patterns. But one of their really great tips was, which I found really useful, was that once you've done the first line of top stitching along the edge here, that one there, that to get a really even spacing for the second line, you could use a um, quilting quarter inch foot and it would give the just right um, sort of quarter inch gap between those lines and make it really easy to follow that line along and get a really even stitching next to it. And I bought a quarter inch quilting foot um, last year, I think it was, when I was um, doing my quilting course. It was such a handy foot to have for that. So it was really nice to get it back out again actually and use it for this top stitching and it worked really well. The only place it didn't work so well when I tried it was on the curve of the fly front. Um, I find it works really well on straight lines, but if you're doing curves, I didn't use it for that. I just used my normal foot and did it by eye. Um, but it worked perfectly on these straight lines here and it was really fun to get that quilting foot out again. So yeah, I definitely recommend that if you have one. It worked really well for getting those twin lines of denim top stitching. And the top stitching thread I've been using is the Gutemann um, jeans or denim thread. And I sort of found that online. Um, Guthrie Garney sell it, so I got it along with this fabric. It's kind of in between the weight of a top stitching thread and a normal sort of Gutemann sew all thread. And it's worked really well actually. I quite like that it's a little bit less thick than classic top stitching thread, which I think can sometimes be a bit too much of a feature. I wanted to have the top stitching, but it'd be a bit subtle. So the jeans threads worked really well, um, or the denim thread. I'll link it down below on Guthrie Gunny website anyway to get the right name. Um, you can use it in the bobbin as well, but I didn't bother. I just used the sort of actual colour of the thread I was using, the sew all thread in the bobbin because I didn't think it was worth changing it. But I quite like it. I quite like the colour I've gone for. I think it gives that sort of jeans look, but it's not too bright. Um, I think I said in a previous video when I made my ginger jeans um, a long time ago, I went for some more bright orange thread and I found it a bit too bright. So I quite like this more subtle top stitching thread. So that's my back. And I'll show you my front. Um, it's got the slash pockets, which I again top stitch and then I've just put in yesterday my zipper so you can see there's the um, zipper gone in had a little bar tack got the top stitching there and down the front and I've been enjoying taking it slowly on this make um, it's coming together gradually in terms of sizing I'm making a size zero on the waist and grading out to a size two on the hips my measurements would put me as a straight size two so I've sized down one size on the waist, but that's what I've done on my previous moss skirt versions too, just because this um, pattern is designed to sit below the natural waist. And I quite like my versions to sit on my natural waist. So I've just pulled it in that little bit so it does sit more snugly around my waist. So that's what I've done. Um, so yeah, it's just one I'm taking slowly, taking my time over those little details. I haven't actually cut out the waistband peach yet um, because I think with my previous versions of the moss skirt, I've ended up taking in the skirt a little bit at the top just to give a bit more extra snugness around the waist. So what I thought I'd do was sew up most of the skirt and see how it seems to fit around the waist. And then I can cut out the waistband and sort of bring it a little bit if I need to. So that is my plan, but it's coming together nicely. And then in terms of fabric for the pocket um, linings, which I've added in now, I did ask you guys for um, some, some ideas of which fabric I should use. And I've actually ended up using a different fabric to the ones that I mentioned in that video. So sorry about that. Um, I actually end up using this fabric here which will look familiar from my previous Make the Thrust shirt dress. Because when I was looking, I found that I had quite a lot of the fabric that was most popular on my last video, the dotty fabric. I had quite a lot of it and I thought I actually might have enough to be able to squeeze a top out of that fabric. So I thought I'd hold it back in case I could use it for a full garment. Um, whereas when I finished my Thrust shirt dress, I didn't have that much of this fabric left. 
so I thought it'd be perfect for kind of using up on pocket bags because there wouldn't really be any other use for it and I think it looks quite nice actually the colour so I hope you don't mind that I've gone with this fabric instead I think it's quite a nice match it's quite pretty you can see the back of it here on the inside of the skirt um you can't see it anyway but I do quite like it and it was quite nice to be able to use up a small amount of fabric on these pocket bags and save my larger piece maybe for a garment at some point in the future so yeah um hopefully I'll make some progress on this over the next few days um at the moment I lengthen the pattern slightly um so it might end up being a bit too long at the moment once I've added the waistband but I thought it's best to have a bit of extra length um and then I can always shorten it later although actually holding it up now it seems quite short so I hope it's not going to end up really short fingers crossed we shall see but I'm enjoying working my way through it and it is nice to revisit a bit of top stitching I remember not really enjoying making my ginger jeans when I did that um denim project but I'm enjoying this a bit more and I guess it's because I know that um it does fit me okay and I don't have all the jeans fitting under the crotch and things to worry about either so it's a slightly more simple fitting job this one but yeah I think my next job actually is because it's a metal zip and you're just supposed to cut through the zip now um to kind of bring it down to trim it down to the right level and so I think actually from looking online I might need to actually remove a couple of the denim sorry the metal um teeth before I do that so I need to borrow a pair of like pliers or something for my husband um to be able to pull off a couple of those teeth so I can cut through without destroying any scissors in the process so that's the next um thing to do on this one um but yeah I'll update you on progress this one in a future video so that is my current sewing whip my denim moss skirt that I've been talking about sewing for absolutely ages so I'm really glad that I finally got some denim and I'm starting to sew that one up and then the next thing I wanted to share was another crafty sort of work in progress. But this one is a crochet make that I'm currently working on. So if you've watched my channel for a while, you know I've been knitting for, for a few years now. Um, but I hadn't um, done much crochet. In fact, I tried to learn to crochet a few times and really failed. I hadn't got my head around it at all. And then more recently, it's just finally started to click which I've been really pleased about because it is something that I really wanted to be able to do and it was quite frustrating that I just couldn't quite get my head around it. But yeah, it's finally started to click recently. I started off by making a granny square little blanket for my daughter which I really enjoyed and I was sort of on the lookout for more crochet projects and then when we were planning to go on holiday I said to my husband I would love to have a crochet project to do in the car because we'd be driving to Wales and then back um, at the end of the holiday it's quite a long drive and I do find that having a crochet project in the car really helps to pass the time a lot quicker and I can kind of chat to my husband and get on with it we do share the driving and um, I don't make him drive the whole way but on the sections where I'm not driving and um, I quite like to be keeping my hands busy doing something so yeah, I was sort of thinking what am I going to make I hadn't got any projects um sort of planned um for crochet and then randomly it just happened to be really lucky a few days before the holiday I got an email from We Are Knitters and they had in the email a free pattern for a bag that you could crochet and I really liked the look of it and um, by chance the wool that was required for that bag, it was two balls of the cotton yarn, um, again by We Are Knitters, I had that yarn left over from another project and um, I made something else previously, a knitting project, I had two balls left over which is exactly the amount this project required so I thought this is um, meant to be, I downloaded that free pattern, um, went and found those balls, I think they were in a suitcase in the loft, I knew they were up there, got them down ready for the holiday and that's what I did in the car on the way there and on the way back when I wasn't doing my driving shifts. So yeah, I'll show you the pattern first. Every now and then I find we knitters do just send out a free pattern. Um, I remember previously there was a um, little beanie hat that I downloaded, that was a knitting project that I enjoyed doing. But this is the pattern here. Um, where's the front page? Hang on a minute. There's a the front page. Here it is. Here's their net market bag pattern. Um, so it's designed to be knitted with two balls of the cotton yarn, and you just need a five millimeter crochet hook too. Um, and this is what the bag looks like here. It's really cute, actually. Um, you knit it in. Um, at the bottom here, this is, U I think it's US single crochet, and then you use this sort of net stitch, which involves using double crochet or UK treble crochet, I think. I'm um, still getting my head around the terms. And you knit it up, and then a bit more single crochet at the top with these cute little handles. So I thought it was quite a sweet bag. I thought it'd make a nice tote bag, and it's something I might actually use. And I did have the, the yarn anyway, so yeah, it just felt like it was meant to be. This is the yarn there, it's the 
Rionita's Pima Cotton Yarn. It's really nice to knit with and um, to crochet with too. And so yeah, this is my bag. I've made quite good progress on it. There has been a bit of unravelling um, as I've been trying to figure out along the way, but yeah, I'm really happy with how it's coming together. So I make it in this black yarn. You can see it's got this sort of more dense section at the bottom and then before you go into this netty stitch. And it's knitted, or no, it's crocheted in the round, which took me a bit of, yeah, getting on top of. It's quite different how you knit in the round. I actually started off by just going round and round and round, like I would knit in the round. But actually with crochet, you have to kind of go round and then turn and then go back the other way. Otherwise the stitches at the bottom, my first time, did not look right at all. It did not look like this. It was much more dense because I was just going round and round and round instead of turning at the end of the circle. Um, but yeah, anyway, it's coming together nicely. I've pretty much now reached the top of this net stitch and I need to move on to doing the little top section and then the handles. So hopefully that'll go okay too. But I'm really enjoying working on it. It's quite a nice size. I think it's something I will use. And it was great that it was sort of essentially free, a free pattern and some yarn I already had in my stash. And yeah, I've been looking forward to the evenings actually where I can get working on it. So yeah, I'm quite happy. I'm quite happy that pattern came along at just the right time. And it's just building my confidence with crochet really, because I'd love to do some crochet and make garments for myself, but I don't want to start on that until I'm a bit more confident. I think I'd like to do it like I did with knitting, where I just try some other items, build up my confidence, and then hopefully once I get to actually making garments for myself, they should go a little bit more smoothly than if I started off with them. That is my plan at least. So yeah, I'm working on that. Um, so hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll finish it. I'm not very fast on the crochet at all. Um, but yeah, I'll share it with you. Um, I'll share... Um, the final bag with you once it is finished. So that is everything that I've got to share in today's video. Everything that I've been up to on the sewing front and on the crochet front too. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, then please do subscribe and press the bell icon too, which means you'll be notified when I bring my future videos out. And if you're a regular viewer, then thank you as ever for tuning in. I really, really appreciate it. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you're having a good week and I'll hopefully see you for another video again soon. But in the meantime, I hope you have a lovely day. Thanks again for watching. Bye.